All right, first agenda item done. All right, status updates. Uh, I guess I'll go first uh, since I'm already talking. Um, been working on Tecton uh, pipeline uh, since last week. Uh, I was able to get a good portion of it completed. Um, I did run into, uh, I guess, a bug at this point uh, with the Tecton pipelines where the replacement uh, isn't happening uh, for what's called an optional image. Uh, for right now, like I wanna provide cache images to be optional so that you can have the option of using a, a volume or uh, image. And that's not working uh, when it's missing. So I, I talked to some of the, the people in Tecton and I created a PR or sorry, I didn't create the PR, but I, I definitely have the code changes. But that's probably not going to make it in for a good while. Um, and so I'm probably going to have to work around some of that. So I'm looking for some options there, which is most likely not using what's called pipeline resources. So a lot of, you know, in the weed details, but uh, overall just continuing to work on pipelines with some bumps in the road. That's it for me. Anybody else status updates? Um, I did some work on uh, the spec part or um, for the um, bringing the current builders to um, what our specification was. So I first of all had made a pull request to the spec repo. Um, core team is checking that out now about um, finalizing the specification. Um, and I also um, did an investigation to see what we actually need to change on the pack on the platform side in order to make our uh, builders compliant with the specification. Um, I uh, also did a bit of work doing trying to close out that um, epic for renaming uh, or using the um, sub commands. So, um, so this was renaming inspect, inspect image to inspect and then moving inspect builder to, to the builder subcommand and um, inspect build pack to the build pack subcommand, um, deprecation notices, et cetera. Um, and right now I'm doing a bit of work um, trying to um, pull in some of our acceptance test refactors from Simon. Cool, awesome. Any other status updates? Um, yeah. I guess uh, I've been working on implementing the asset packages RFC pack. And so um, I think that this is going to come in in a couple different PRs, but there should be one being opened pretty quickly that just will let you create like an asset cache. It won't be very functional at first. But, yeah. Cool, cool. Any more? All right, I think that's the end of that one. Moving on to release planning. Uh, do we have anything there? In, um, life cycle may be cutting a, um, a release, right? A bug fix. Yeah, we were talking about cutting a patch for a bug that Jesse found. How impactful is that? Uh, and will that essentially, like, ascent should pack also deploy a patch to bump up the default lifecycle? I think he found it um, when mounting secrets in Kubernetes. So it may not affect pack so much. Cool, that makes sense. Okay. Anything else on release planning? Uh, when's the next date for PAC? March something. I put it on the milestones and I opened up the next milestone with the early with the date for that. Cool, great. All right, moving on to discussions needed. Uh, here, I'll share my screen. Okie dokie. All right, so we've got a couple items. Is there anything uh, recent 
or anything that anybody would like to discuss at this point in time from this list. Natalie, what do you think of, of the issue that you had put months ago, many, many months ago about uh, testing pack master against lifecycle master? I don't know if that, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that, about that. <laughs> uh, once you're on the call, once you're on the sub team sync, I'm like, oh, this is great. I think we took, like, we, we put this in at one point, not on a whim, but just, you know. There was real thought behind it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, do we still like, you know, typically for things like this is if it's not a reoccurring theme of a desire, then it feels like it's maybe not as high of a priority or maybe not as relevant anymore. Do we feel like this is still something that's either bitten us or important or should we just close it? Uh, yeah. So this would catch regressions in the life cycle before they're released. Yeah. It'd be nice. I mean, I, I have to say like, when we release the life cycle, uh, we run the pack acceptance tests against our, like the binary that we're planning to release before so it's not that this check isn't being done. So it would it only would when you eliminate. release, or is that no, just when we release? Yeah, I, I'm really hesitant about this because I feel like you know, kind of like the question uh, mentions here is whether this should be on the pack or the life cycle. It's like you have now two components that are continuously moving. Right. And it becomes a question of who broke the build. Right. And then both parties having to become involved to try to rectify the issue where, I mean, I'm trying to think through it. If we just cap it the way that we have it right now, where it's dependent on a release going out. Right. So the life cycle already makes this test against pack uh, when it's about to release and we also do it, I guess, on pack. When we, we're about to release, we bump to the latest version of the life cycle. I think we're, we're at a pretty safe spot. There's a very small marginal, you know, uh, error prone ratio, but I think we're overall good. So I don't know that this is as necessary. I think especially because, because there already is the um, release on the the test on the pre life cycle release. I think that especially um, convinces me because on the pack side, it could be that then we'd have to enforce, you know, require um, hot fixes of uh, the life cycle. But once we know that they're already testing against our master, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Is that test automated, um, Natalie? The one where you run lifecycle against the pack acceptance test before release? Nope. Nope. All right. <laughs> so maybe that's the issue for the life cycle. Yeah. I mean, I think it kind of feels like it belongs more in the life cycle because right. I mean, right now our release cadence is what's driving the current manual exercise of these tests. So I don't know. Oh, and you can't, it's really hard to do. I think this is connected to another issue that we have as well, that um, because for untrusted builds, certainly we pull the lifecycle image down from Docker Hub. So, and, and that image doesn't exist when you're, um, that image doesn't exist bef before you've released the life, latest lifecycle. I think that that um, that uh, that causes some issues, right? Yeah, that that issue that would actually be 
like if we were to try to put some automation around the acceptance test, we would need to get that issue, like something for that issue um, in order to do that. Cause right now I'm like, literally I go and I change in the code, the, ah. <laughs> the tag that it's putting on the image to be the commit SHA that I want. So that's, to be able to- That's super great, yeah, okay. Yeah. Also, I looked at the, that's not listed in the lifecycle release document. So having that step listed could definitely be helpful. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, so if it's okay with everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and close this with just this comment here. If you'd like to add more context, uh, please feel free to continue to comment. Cool. All right, there you go. We resolved one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, anything else on here? I was going to bring this up um, if there's sufficient time for the user defined cached volume names. I feel like someone said they were going to do it. I'm not going to point fingers, but. Did Meaning this, I mentioned it. <laughs> did this get done or do we know where it is in the priority? There was another issue around having readable cache volume names that is done. I don't think that this would be very much work, but. Could you elaborate on, or maybe point to that other issue? Uh, I can try and find it. That was accomplished with the cache value, with the, the cache image PR. I, I think it originally was, and then- Oh no, it was, it was spun out, out of a separate then, one, but yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Add labels to cache volumes? Yeah. But I mean, I don't think this is very much work to let you specify this name. OK, so all we did was essentially uh, change made the name more human readable and deterministic. Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't overriding things all the time, right? No, I never, I never it wasn't before I knew it was shout based, but. Yeah. There, it's now associated to a specific build, which is easier. I mean, there's like a part of this is like once we start doing this kind of semantic of letting you specify stuff, like some of the other tooling has a more flexible ways that you can specify where stuff is going, et cetera. Right. So yeah. I think this individual change is pretty small, but like we're kind of reaching a point where there's like all this like flag configuration for like, oh, what kind of cache volume am I using? How am I specifying it? And I feel like we might want to come up with like a comprehensive way to be like, this is where it's going. This is the type. So that if we're going to give people configuration or this ability, they can like kind of, they don't have to mix and match it with a bunch of other options in our CLI, right? And also, if you look at the image, it doesn't, it's not really about user defined cache value names. It's about being able to give uh, the same cache image multiple times. So I think that this was solved with the dash dash cache image flag. Um, it was just user defined cache value names was one, um, one request. I think I agree. I feel like there's so many flags that adding more is just making build uh, more and more incomprehensible for yeah. power users. 
Or like, let's see, like, I remember seeing something about what build kit does for this stuff, and it's like you just specify like it. I guess I I'm not a huge fan of saying that cache image solves this use case. And the reason for that is because it requires a registry to also be available when a cache volume does not. Right? Like I, I recall this came up recently as someone wanting to reuse the cache between, you know, image a and image B, but they were both the same app, but I forget exactly what it is. I think they were just retagging it or something like that, right? Um, and yeah, like, again, in my response, you know, it was ultimately, you could do this with image cache, but I don't see why we wouldn't allow for image volume to, or sorry, cache volume to also be uh, named or specified, right? Like the, the caveat or concerns that we have for cache volumes would be the exact same as cache image. And we obviously provided cache image. So I don't see any reason why we wouldn't provide cache volume other than by saying that we don't want to add one more CLI flag, which doesn't seem to be a good argument in my opinion. Yeah, I think we should add this, right? I just think that we might want to have like a, we've like added all these little bits of functionality, right? And now we're at a point where they all combine in kind of like many different ways. We should just come up with a, a one way to kind of specify this stuff, right? Like I want it, this to be a cache image. I want it to be named this, right? Is, is that not that seem what it is right now? Or what it would be? No, because you, you need to use the problem is with publish. Um, right now, cache image requires publish, um, and that was based on issues in the lifecycle, I think. And yeah, we tell local users to use a volume, but it's not those. Oh, I guess it's total standard. I think it's impossible to use cache image with a daemon. I think that's just how we did it, like in pack. But maybe I'm misremembering. It shouldn't be impossible, right? It is unallowed, but it's because the life cycle doesn't allow you to have a cache image that is not remote, right? It just. Yes, that is true. But you can use a remote cache image with your Docker. Game and build if you want to. Okay. I don't think you can. I think the I think the way things work. I mean, I guess you could actually I know you can because I wrote the acceptance test for the analyzer that very like when using a Docker daemon, cache image in a registry is allowed. Cache image in a daemon is ignored. Yeah. So yeah, this is, and this is where we're getting back to like, okay, how should pack do this, right? Cause we don't have, where is this image coming from? Where is it going to semantics and any of our flags, right? So it's- Interesting. We, we kind of assume that it's gonna be a replacement, right? A one for one swap whenever we do this. And we do the same thing for volumes, right? It's gonna be like same name, same image output image name results in the same volume name. So. So I, I, maybe I'm misunderstanding this, but like this ask is very minimal and very specific. And it seems like we're not talking a bigger, more holistic issue that I guess now I question whether or not we need to solve that for you know, in the immediate, you know, before we provide this functionality or can we just basically handle that as a secondary discussion? Cause it seems like we want a bigger discussion revolving that holistic issue. Um, it is of my opinion that I think we should be able to provide this in this particular issue without any problems or concerns, right? And then improve upon it once we get to that, you know, once we have that bigger discussion, which I think, Dan, are you volunteering to bring up that discussion in a, 
in written form so we could have a wider conversation about it. I am volunteering. Okay. Maybe we could use the uh, discussion board for something like that. Oh, cool. All right, so with that said, I think we want to remove discussion needed from this one, right? And we are gonna go forward with this change. Sound good with the maintainers here? Definitely fine. Cool. All right, with that said, I think we've eaten up enough time there. Um, we did have some RFCs to go over, if I recall correctly. So we took care of two issues. That's, uh, that's nice. Okay, sharing my screen again. So on these RFCs, what do we need to really do with them? This one's a draft, so I'm assuming we could skip that for now. Try to exclude draft from our uh, search. Um, pack command to create a build pack repo, not much, because that's an, uh, that's an FCP. Um, Yeah, so that means they got approved by all the maintainers and all that. I think if I, I want to start from the bottom, right, November 6th, uh, the Stackify repo. Yeah. I think the code for this actually exists and it's just moving it. I think some of the implementation details changed through the RFC. Yeah. Yeah, and I also believe that it is not ex publicly accessible either. It's like in the pivotal org right now. So probably moving so, that. Stuff. Yeah, so what do we want to do in this meeting with the RFCs that are still pending? Is it just a reminder? Uh, at the very least, just a reminder to look at things and make sure that they're okay. Um, at this point, it's pretty hard just because we were pretty limited on time with our current scope. Um, but in the future, perhaps when we have some more time, we can look at some of the open issues and discuss that here before bringing it over to um, to Russell again. The working to group? the standard media yeah, working groups. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. I think we're, we're definitely going to have to hash out a little bit more detail on, on what conversations happen in this meeting versus the working group. Uh, but I think th there's ongoing conversations there. Totally. Cool. All right. Well, I think we're at time. Um, yeah, we'll do better next time on that. Appreciate everybody being here. See you, everyone.